Hello, welcome to Interior Science Lecture. This is going to be the last lesson for Module 6. We're going to continue our discussion on phase diagram of binary alloy. And, um, but in this binary, uh, binary alloy phase diagram that we're going to talk about in this lecture, it's going to create more than two solid solutions. Um, so in the first one that we talk about, we talk about isomorphic system. Isomorphic system involve um, solidifications of two elements that will create one solid solution. In the eutectic system, it will create, um, due to solubility limit, it will create two types of solid solution in the end. However, in this more complex system, when we add two types of elements, what will happen is we can see uh, there are different uh, types of solid solutions in between the two solid phase that we have discussed before. All right, so let's begin. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand what it meant by intermediate phases and compound. You should be able to understand there are different types of isothermal reaction which we call as eutectoid peritectic and peritectoid transformation. You should be able to interpret phase diagram that contain these intermediate phases and intermediate compound. So just a little bit of recap from our previous um, lecture. This phase diagram here shows a phase diagram of eutectic system. So in the eutectic system, we have learned that um, due to solubility limit, two types of solid solution will be created um, when two types of elements or metal mix with each other. Due to their solubility limit, they cannot uh, completely become soluble um, in the range of compositions. So what happened is that we will have two types of solid solution. And in this eutectic phase diagram, you can see that um, the alpha phase here and the beta phase here um, reside on each side of this phase diagram. So alpha phase and beta phase here is what we call as terminal phase. So the compositions in between will have a mixture of both alpha and beta solid solution. So this is eutectic system. However, binary alloy system are not always going to be that simple with just two ter terminal phases in, at the end of the phase diagram, at the left end and the right end of the phase diagram. More often than not, we will have what we call as intermediate phases um, in between the terminal phases. So for example, here um, is a phase diagram of nickel, belongs to nickel and sulfur system. So what you can see here in between 35, around 35% 35 of sulfur inside nickel to 40%, there's another type of solid solution, what we, um, I denoted here as beta solid solutions. So other type of solid solution can be found in, this, um, in between the terminal phases and this type of solid solution is what we call as intermediate phases. And more often than not, we can also found intermetallic compound in between the terminal phases. So intermetallic compound is uh, happen when we have exact precise composition between the nickel and sulfur for this case, um, which I will talk more in this lecture today. I'll begin the discussion on the binary alloy system that create complex phase diagram by explaining what is intermediate phases. So throughout this discussion on intermediate phases, I will use copper zinc system as an example. So copper zinc alloy is what we normally know as brass alloy. So this is the phase diagram of brass um, with copper on this extreme and zinc on this extreme. So here you can observe there are two terminal phases, which is alpha solid solution 
and ETA solid solution, the one I shared with the blue color. So these two are the terminal phases with copper solid solution. Um, the alpha solid solution is a copper rich solid solution and ETA solid solution is a zinc rich solid solution. And in between these two terminal phases, you can see there are four other phases exist. We have a beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. So these four are what we call as intermediate phases. And you can also see region where, if I shade it here, this region is where alpha and beta exist. Here in this region is we have a mixture of beta and gamma. Here we have a region where we have delta and gamma. And here we have epsilon and gamma in its microstructure. All right. So that's just a brief introduction on what is intermediate phases. So let's um, go further. So here, the beta, the gamma, the delta, and epsilon are all intermediate phases. So what does this mean? So they are going to form a different crystal structure than either the alpha solid solution, which consists of phase centric cubic, which is the crystal structure of pure copper. So the alpha phase here has FCC crystal structure following the pure copper. So it's a copper rich solid solution. And we have the eta solid solution, which is the terminal phase on the other extreme, consists of um, zinc rich solid solution and it will follow the crystal structure of pure zinc, which is hexagonal closed packed. So the intermediate phases in between did not going to, are not going to follow the two extreme. They will create their own crystal structure. So they will create other type of solid phase. All right, so let's just focus on our terminal phases first. So if you look at the one, the left extreme of the phase diagram, we have these terminal phases that we call, the terminal phase that we call alpha phase here. So alpha phase consists of mainly copper atoms with some zinc atoms in the FCC crystal structure. So FCC crystal structure, um, belongs to um, pure copper. So pure copper, when they solidify, they will form uh, an FCC crystal structure. So alpha solid solution is still following that crystal structure. However, now inside that crystal structure, there will be some atoms of zinc residing inside it. So up to 35% percentage of zinc this alpha solid solution will be created if we mix these two elements. And if we look at the left, at the right extreme, we saw this um, eta solid solution. So eta solid solution is following the um, crystal structure of pure zinc. So pure zinc, when it solidify, it will solidify in a crystal structure of um, hexagonal close pack. So this solid solution in between around up to 2% of amount of copper inside zinc, it can create this crystals, uh, it can create this solid solution. So this solid solution consists mainly zinc atom with some copper atom in the HCP crystal structure. So these are the two terminal phases. So in between these two terminal phases, we can see there are four other different phases. So those phases here, it's beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. So these phases have different crystal structure than either of their component. So they will have different crystal structure than FCC, than also HCP. 
which belongs to pure copper and pure zinc. So these phases is what we call as intermediate phases. So from this phase diagram, what you can observe is that a copper rich solid solution, which is the alpha phase solid solution, can dissolve up to 32.5 percentage of zinc at a solidus temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. And you can also see that this proportion is increasing to 39 degrees Celsius at 455 degrees Celsius. And upon uh, further cooling, this um, solubility limit will also drop a little bit more. And as you can see here, if you have a composition of zinc in your alloy in between 35, 35 weight percentage to 50 weight percentage, beta phase solid solution will be formed. And this beta phase solid solution has BCC crystal structure. And this is how, how it will look like. So the atoms of zinc will reside in the middle of this BCC crystal structure. So I want you to take five minutes or even less to think what is the mechanical properties of the, this beta phase solid solution. So you should be able to answer this by, um, by revising how this location is going to move on the slip plane of this crystal structure. So now you have two different types of atoms in this BCC crystal structure. So think about it. What do you think the crystal structure of, um, uh, what do you think the mechanical behavior or uh, the ductility of this metal will be if we compare to BCC crystal structure that has all of the atoms comes from the same species. So now, of course, when we have a crystal structure consisting different species of atoms at its lattice point, we actually introduce strengthening mechanism, what we call as solid solution strengthening. So now, if we have a dislocation that's trying to move, it will be harder for this dislocation to be activated because on the slip plane of the um, crystal structure, there are now a different species on that crystal structure that will impede the motion of this location. So you can see that the crystals with this type of crystal structure, materials can get stronger. All right, so now we want to have a look at the micro microstructure transformation during solidifications for this brass alloy that consists of intermediate phases. So let's take, for example, if I want to have a look at solidifications of brass um, alloy that consists 40% of zinc inside it. So how is the final microstructure is going to look like? So what I can do is drawing this line here to indicate this is the brass that I am looking at. So at this point, um, above the liquidus line, so above the liquidus line, everything will still be in liquid. So if like, let's say I'm looking at this alloy at a thousand degrees Celsius, at that point, everything is still in molten metal. And what about at this point here? point number two. So at this point here, all those liquid will be in beta solid solution. So it will form a crystal with a single phase, which is beta phase. So your, if you look under the microscope at, nine, at 109 degrees Celsius, um, this beta, so this, uh, this uh, brass will only have beta solid solution. As the temperature drop, when it reach this line here, what will happen is that the 
the alpha solid solutions solubility limit of um, copper um, of copper rich solid solution will be uh, rich so it will be uh, get to its limit so what will happen at that point is that alpha solid solution will start to precipitate out of beta solid solution so if we look at this temperature here where it's it lies in between the region the purple region purple region as i have explained before will consist of alpha and beta solid solution so when if you look under the microscope at around 630 degrees celsius you will see something like this a beta solid solution as the matrix with a precipitate of alpha coming out of it so everywhere within that matrix alpha solid solution will start to precipitate out this is because of the solubility limit and if you look under the microscope even further down what you can see that this precipitate is gonna um is gonna appear in the microstructure so here you can see the needle structure is the alpha solid solution with the beta as the um with the matrix as the beta solid solution so that is how the transformation of microstructure happen from solidification process to around room temperature. Now let's have a look even um, closer to this um, alloy uh, with 60%, 40% uh, of zinc with 60% of copper. I want to know if I ask you at 630 degrees Celsius of this brass alloy, what are the phases that exist? So you can begin answering that questions by, um, by drawing this red line here and draw that vertical line from 630 degrees Celsius passing through that red line. So here it lies on this region, the purple region. So we know that there are beta solid solution and alpha solid solution in our microstructure. And I will, if I ask you what are the composition of these phases, similar to what we have learned so far, you just need to draw the tie line to figure this out. So if I enhance that, um, if I zoom to that region and you draw that tie line, the tie line that passing through this line here where it reached to the alpha solid solution so you know that this is alpha solution solid solution that will tell you if, it, if you draw the vertical line passing to the composition line it will tell you the composition of alpha solid solution so similarly you can do that with beta solid solution as well so here the alpha solid solution is um, having 62% of copper and 38% of zinc. So for beta solid solution, you draw that vertical line and it will tell you that that beta solid solution at 630 degrees Celsius for this 40% zinc alloy, um, zinc brass alloy, um, contain 56% of copper and the rest is zinc. So that's how you interpret the phase diagram with intermediate phases. If I ask what are the fractions of phases present at 630 degrees Celsius for this brass that contain 48% of zinc, you can similarly use lever rolls to get your answer. So here, what you need is the distance between the fulcrum to the solvers line of alpha and um, the distance between the fulcrum to the solvers line of beta. So here I denote them as A and B. So to get the beta solid solution mass fraction, you need A divided by the overall length times 100 
if you do your calculation right, you will get that at this point, at 630 degrees Celsius, in the microstructure, there will be 33.33% of beta. And similarly, you use liver rolls to get for mass fraction for alpha solid solution. So now you need uh, the length B. So always remember this is reverse. So for length B divided by overall length time 100. And if you do your calculation right, you will get that the mass fraction of um, alpha solid solution at this point is 66.67%. So here you can uh, conclude that your microstructure consists of two solid solution, 66% of it is alpha and 33% of it is beta solid solution. And this is the microstructure at 630 degrees Celsius. For zinc, that, for brass alloy that contain 40% of zinc. So if I ask you about a different composition, so for let's say if I give you a composition that now will show in the phase diagram that you will have uh, different intermediate phases, you, have, you will have delta or epsilon or the gamma, um, so the way to interpret them is exactly the same as the one I show you. So you need to use tie, tie line to get the composition, you need to use liver roll to get the mass fraction. So it's the same with the previous previous um, system as well. All right, so what are the effects of uh, these intermediate phases to the mechanical behavior of the alloy? So with alpha brass, so we know alpha brass has FCC crystal structure, therefore it is more ductile. It is harder uh, or stronger if we compare to pure metal, but they still have FCC crystal structure. So if we compare them to beta solid solution, FCC is still going to be a little bit ductile. So this is the microstructure of pure alpha brass. So there's no beta brass in the microstructure at all. So there's only one type of solid solution, solid solution, which is alpha solid solution. So this is when the microstructure, when you have only 20% of zinc. So here, this alloy has better core working formability than the beta brass. So it is hard, it is more ductile, so it's easier for us to shape it. So now let's have a look when we have the combination of the beta and alpha solid solution in our microstructure. But before that, let's have a look at when the brass contain only beta microstructure, only beta solid solution in the microstructure. So beta brass, as we have discussed, has BCC crystal structure with different species in it, um, in the middle, in the center of that crystal structure. So it's naturally dislocation motion will be impeded by this. So beta brass has a stronger and harder mechanical behavior. But again, when we have a materials that uh, uh, the dislocation motion is harder to move, means that materials is a little bit, is more brittle if we compare to alpha solid solution. So because of the crystal structure, it is more brittle. So this is the microstructure of beta brass solid solution. So it only contain beta brass um, solid solution in the microstructure. So they can only be co-work, um, hot work, and also cast. So you can't shape them by cold working because co-working is going to break them. Now what happens when we have both microstructure, both phases in our uh, microstructure? So this is what we call as duplex brass. So the microstructure will consist both alpha and the intermediate phase beta solid solution. So the microstructure that I show you at the beginning is um, the microstructure for duplex brass. So with duplex brass, 
here the light color here in the microstructure is the alpha solid solution and the one with the a little bit golden color is the beta solid solution so they both has a different crystal structure and the amount of copper and brass in them is different but they still consist of only zinc and also copper but the crystal structure is different and therefore they're creating a different phase of solid so this alloy will have both combinations of the mecha mechanical properties of the two extreme just then so this alloy is both harder and stronger and, but it has a lower ductility than alpha brass so you can increase the strength of alpha brass by having beta brass inside the uh, microstructure and also you can reduce the hardness or the brittleness of beta brass by having alpha brass in the microstructure so it is less workable if we compare to alpha brass but we can increase its strength if we compare to alpha brass so that is going to uh, that is how this type of microstructure or this type of um, intermediate phases can affect the mechanical behavior of the materials now if we look at the region of um, this phase diagram when we have between 50 percent to 70 percent of zinc inside copper what we can see that the gamma phase will be formed so gamma phase has a cubic lattice so different again from the two extreme of these uh, terminal phases so it has cubic lattice that will look like this so basically gamma um, solid solution is very hard it is never um, being used by itself so the microstructure must contain other type of phases for it to be useful so if we look at this phase diagram and if I have around 50% of zinc so 50% zinc and 50% of copper in my molten metal the final microstructure that I would get will look like this so here the gamma brass will precipitate out of beta brass matrix at room temperature so what I would like you to do is to um, is to with the aid of sketch i want you to uh, explain the microstructure transformation during solidification process of this um, of this alloy that contain 50 percent of zinc and 50 percent of copper you don't have to submit you just pause this video and try if you can do it and once you have uh, done it, if you need the clarification, you can send me a message. Now let's have a look at intermetallic compound. Um, so these are the compounds that can also exist in between the terminal phases. So they're quite different than the intermediate phases. Um, and let's see how they are different. So in phase diagram, intermetallic compounds are represented by line, um, not area as what we have seen for intermediate phases because the composition to create the intermetallic compound is always going to be an exact composition. So for example, um, if, you, if you look back for the beta brass just then, to create a beta brass, we need a zinc in between uh, compositions of 35 to 50% of zinc. So if we have 35 to 50%, we can get uh, uh, we can get beta brass. However, with intermetallic compound, that's not the case. So uh, you will use magnesium and plumbum system as an example. Here in this phase diagram, the line that I color as a red color here is a line that represented intermetallic compound. And this compound can only be formed when we have this exact composition of magnesium and plumbum. 
So intermetallic compound is um, a single phase with specific crystal structure, different from crystal structure of magnesium, different from crystal structure of plumber. Um, and this can only happen at this precise composition, this precise combination of magnesium and plumbum. So here it is around 81% of plumbum with 19% of magnesium. So when you have in your alloy, you have 19% of magnesium and you have um, and you have about 81% of, not about, 81% of plumber, you combine them, what you will get, an alloy with intermetallic compound with different crystal structure from each of its parent metal. So if you, we look at this uh, phase diagram closely between the magnesium and the plumber system, what we can see on the left extreme of this phase diagram, we have alpha solid solution. And this alpha solid solution is, a, um, is the magnesium rich solid solution with um, HCP crystal structure. And HCP crystal structure is the crystal structure of pure magnesium. And then on the left and the right side of this uh, phase diagram, we can see beta phase solid solution. And this beta phase solid solution is a plumbum rich solid solution with FCC crystal structure. Again, FCC crystal structure is uh, the crystal structure of pure plumbum. So this um, beta phase solid solution will have more plumbum um, atoms uh, and just a little bit of uh, magnesium reside inside it. And in between these two terminal phases, we have here represented by this red line is the intermetallic compound. So when we mix 81% of plumbum and 19% with 19% of magnesium, a new phase with anti-fluoride anti -fluoride cubic structure will be formed. And this is how the crystal um, structure of this metallic compound looks like. It has a ratio of 2 to 1 between the magnesium and the plumbum in this unit cell. And how do we interpret phase diagram with intermetallic compound? We use the same technique as what we have learned before. So if let's say I want to have a look at the solidification process of the molten metal containing 81% of plumbum with 19% of magnesium. So what will happen is that, so what I need to do first is to draw that line. So apparently this, um, this alloy is the intermetallic compound alloy. So at um, around 650 degrees Celsius, this alloy is in liquid form. And at 550 degrees Celsius, um, this intermetallic compound will start uh, forming. This is an isothermal reaction. So the solidification will end at the same time um, as the, the solidification started. So all a liquid will transform into solid at one temperature. This is similar to pure metal. And if let's say I asked you questions about the solidification process of a molten metal containing 67% of plumbum and 23% uh, of um, magnesium, what, how do you interpret it from the phase diagram? What you need to do is always draw that line representing that alloy and then carry on and explain to me at around 650 degrees Celsius, this alloy is still in liquid form. As soon as it reach about 570 degrees Celsius, what you can observe here is that the molten metal will transform into solid, two types of solids straight away at this temperature. So you can see here, 
at this temperature is what we call as eutectic point and below this temperature at this region here we have two types of solid which is alpha solid solution and the intermetallic compound so this is a eutectic composition eutectic reaction it happens in isothermal reaction so we have a liquid transformed into two types of solid so um, after this reaction happen your final microstructure will consist of eutectic microstructure of um, alpha solid solution with intermetallic compound sitting next to it so you will have the layer cake um, microstructure again now how about uh, the molten metal containing 74% of plumber with 26% of magnesium. So how does the solidification um, looks like? So you can draw that line there. What you can see um, at 650 degrees Celsius, this alloy is still in liquid form. As soon as it touched the liquidus line, which is at 500 10 degrees Celsius, the primary crystal structure, which in this case is the intermetallic compound. So here in this region, we have Mg2Pb plus liquid. So at that point, at the liquidus, at the liquidus um, line, the first nuclear or the first crystal that will be formed is the intermetallic compound with that crystal structure that I show you just then. And as the temperature drop, this crystal structure of the Mg2BB, the, um, the intermetallic compound, will grow bigger and bigger. And the composition of the liquid will start to deplete um, and get to a composition of eutectic composition. So as soon as it reached that, um, as soon as it reached this um, point here where the eutectic reaction happened, you can see that your compositions of your liquid at that point, I will color it in blue color. So at this point, the liquid composition is this composition here. And we've learned before in the previous slide, this is a composition of eutectic. So the eutectic, the red remaining liquid will now transform into eutectic composition. So your final microstructure uh, will form, will, when you look under the microscope, you will see that you have the primary crystal, with the, which is the intermetallic compound, and you will have the eutectic microstructure consists of the intermetallic compound layered with the um, alpha solid solution. So the way we interpret this phase diagram, um, because as you can see in this phase diagram, the intermetallic compound um, represented by that one line. So only at that precise combination that the intermetallic compound will be formed. And also what you can see that the solidification process of this intermetallic compound happened similar or the same as the pure metal. It happened at an isothermal reaction. So when we interpret this phase diagram, we can separate them as the section that I, I show you here. So the purple section has alpha solid solution and uh, intermetallic compound as the terminal phases so you can interpret them separately from the blue section so the blue section has intermetallic compound and the beta solid solution as the terminal phases now let's have a look at how the microstructure formation happen when we have intermetallic compound in our um, phase diagram. So if let's say I want to have a look at 85% uh, an alloy that consists of 85% of plumbum with 15% of magnesium. So here what I need to do first is to draw the line representing this alloy. 
at around 600 degrees Celsius, everything is still in liquid form. As soon as I touch this liquidus line here, the first primary crystals will start to form. And that first primary crystal is the intermetallic compound. So the first crystal will be the intermetallic compound. And this will grow bigger and bigger within this region. So as soon as it reach close to that uh, line of U tactic, this is close, not at that line yet, this intermetallic compound is going to go bigger and bigger. When it reach the U tactic line, the primary intermetallic compound will stop growing. All right. So as soon as it reach that U tactic line there, so in this section you can also see another U tactic reaction. So this is U tactic reaction for this separate section of the phase diagram. So as soon as it reach the U tactic um, composition, U tactic line means that the remaining liquid is now having the U tactic. So that's Mg2Pb. That's the, um, the primary crystal, Mg2Pb, Mg2Pb. So as soon as it reach this line here, what will happen is that the remaining liquid will start to transform into eutectic microstructure. And this eutectic microstructure consists of Mg2 Pb and also beta solid solution. So everywhere the layer cake will start to form and this layer cake has Mg2 Pb and beta phase. So remember this um, intermetallic compound and this intermetallic compound are the same. They're both the same but their microstructure formations are different because they form at different temperature. And the one in the eutectic microstructure, we call it as the eutectic, um, we, we call it as the intermetallic compound in the microstructure of eutectic. Whereas the big one here, we call them as the primary intermetallic compound. So that's about it on the discussion of intermediate phases and intermetallic compound. Um, now we get to the last part of this module, module 6, where we will talk a, a little bit on isothermal reactions. So, so far we have learned that when pure metal solidified, it happens in a thermal arrest. It happens in isothermal reactions. So there is no um, change in temperature when solidifications of pure metal happen. And that's also true for eutectic reaction. So for metals um, alloy that consists a certain composition, eutectic composition can happen. So eutectic composition um, ha uh, reaction happen um, in isothermal reaction, which means that it only happen in a constant temperature. There's no change in temperature. But there are also other type of isothermal reaction. So here in this section, I will discuss three of them. So the first one that I'm going to um, explain is eutectoid reaction. So eutectoid reaction is a solid state transformation. The phase change reaction of an alloy um, happen in which on cooling, one type of single solid phase transform into two other types of solid phase, not the same as the one that it's transforming from. So for example, if I bring back my uh, brass uh, phase diagram, I have here that I put as a cross there um, as a eutectoid uh, reaction. So this is an isothermal reaction. What will happen above that point, I have the delta intermediate phase. 
So that delta phase, now after it reached 558 degrees Celsius, it will start to transform into two other type of um, solid phase, which is gamma and epsilon. So that happens in isothermal reaction. So the first delta that is going to transform is at 558, and it, when that that reaction, that isothermal reaction finish, it finish at the same temperature. And when it finish, there will be two types of solid created. So get yourself familiar with this one because we're going to use it a lot in module seven. So for an alloy with 25% of copper and 75% of zinc at 558 degrees Celsius, what will happen is that when it reaches that temperature, we already have a microstructure that has delta phase. So everywhere is delta phase. When it reaches 558 degrees Celsius, what will happen is that the final microstructure, it will start to transform into two other type of a mixture of gamma and epsilon. And this reaction happened in isothermal reaction. Another type of isothermal reaction is what we call as peritactic reaction. So peritactic reaction is the three-phase reaction in which upon cooling, two phases one of those phases is liquid, react to create a new type of solid. So here in this diagram, I have two peritactic um, reaction, but I'll just explain one here. So in this, at this point here, above this point, as you can see, you have delta and liquid. As soon as the temperature reach 558 degrees Celsius, what you can see is that this alloy will create another type of solid, which is epsilon. So peritactic involve um, the formation of uh, transformation of one type of solid with liquid to another type or a new type of solid phase. So if we look at the microstructure transformation, at that point of, of the peritactic um, point, peritactic reaction. So what we have at that point is that we have an, a primary delta. We have primary delta with the rest still liquid. So we have liquid. As soon as it get to this temperature here, it will transform. The liquid will dissolve this um, delta solid solution and it will transform into epsilon. So that's how peritactic reaction transformation will happen. And lastly, we have peritectoid reaction. So peritectoid reaction, this is a transformation involving two type of solid phase in alloy system that will transform into new solid phase. So here in this um, mixture of metal A and metal B, I have, um, if I have this solidification of this alloy here, what will happen is that from liquid, it will start as soon as the temperature drop, it will transform into gamma, and remaining still going to be in liquid form. So this is what we call as primary gamma. As soon as it reach this line here, all the remaining liquid will transform into beta. So this, at this temperature within this area, this alloy has a microstructure of alpha and beta. Soon as it reached the peritactic reaction, peritectoid reaction, peritectoid point, one other type 
of solid solution, which is not the gamma and beta, will be formed. So in this case, it's alpha. So the, the peritoctoid reaction is an isothermal reaction involving the phase transformation from two types of solid to a new type of solid, so a different type of solid. So in summary, for this uh, final lesson for module six, we have learned that intermediate phases are the phases in between the terminal phases. We also learned that the stoichiometry of the element is a Z for intermetallic compound. And we have learned that eutectoid reaction is the reaction when a single phase of solid transform into two other solid. We've learned that peritactic reaction is a reaction when two phases, which one of them should be liquid and solid, transform into new solid phase. And peritactoid reaction is a reaction involving two solid phases transform into new solid phase. So that's it. We have finished with module six. We're going to talk about a steel phase diagram, um, which is the Mona Lisa of phase diagram, the most important phase diagram in our next module. So I'll see you then. Thank you very much.